Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Steve O'Grady. I am the co-founder of Redmonk. Uh, Redmonk, if you have not uh, heard of us, is a developer-focused industry analyst firm. And I'm here today with Vincent from Red Hat. Vincent, what do you do, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Steve. Um, my name is Vincent Danen. I'm the Vice President of Product Security here at Red Hat, doing a lot of interesting security things uh, for all of our products and services. Wonderful, and security, of course, is the, the topic that we are here to discuss today. Uh, security obviously is near and dear to everybody's heart. I think at this point, um, it's gone from, you know, very much an afterthought 10 or 20 years ago to something that is front and center, not just for enterprises, uh, importantly, but for the developers as well. Um, you know, because, you know, obviously the enterprises are sensitive to sort of the increasing uh, risks and capital losses, you know, from vulnerabilities, intrusions, and so on. Uh, but developers are also you know, sort of increasingly being um, kind of uh, compelled, I guess, to be aware of it. Um, because as it turns out, you know, trying to bolt things on after the fact was not potentially a great way to produce secure applications. So, uh, you know, they are, you know, introducing all of that sort of earlier along in the process, you know, shift left and, and all that. But what we're here today to talk about rather is the sort of the, the focus and import on security as it pertains to open source in particular. And, you know, this is a subject for anybody with any history in open source. This will be a you know, sort of interesting contrast, you know, because if you go back 10 or 20 years ago, uh, the default assumption, uh, you know, for a lot of uh, folks in the industry was that open source was inherently insecure by design. Uh, it just couldn't be secure because, hey, the source code's available and, you know, it's just not possible to produce secure applications. The perceptions of that obviously have come full circle, right? You know, that is no longer sort of the default assumption. I think the common industry understanding at this point is, is that, you know, open source is no more, um, you know, sort of insecure, you know, than, than its proprietary software. But it does come with some some interesting and sort of unique challenges, uh, you know, for, you know, the commercial organization, commercial open source organi organizations, I should say, and, you know, the, the customers uh, thereof. So, you know, in an era when security is, is of paramount importance because of the risks that we mentioned, and because of the developer um, efforts, you know, sort of as as articulated, you know, where does Red Hat sit in terms of the appropriate role for, you know, sort of a commercial open source supplier, a commercial open source organization um, on the question of, you know, helping to produce a secure infrastructure? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, obviously, I, I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years dealing with open source and security. So I understand that early perception of open source being more insecure. Um, I actually don't think that's true. And I think most people don't think that's true anymore either. That's there right. is the same challenges with proprietary software as there is with open source software. Uh, as long as humans are writing software, all software is going to have bugs uh, yeah, and all, all software is going to have security issues, right? Uh, the interesting thing about open source is there's a transparency around those issues. So <clears throat> whether it's something is fixed or not, you understand that there's a problem there because you have the availability of the source code or in the case of Red Hat, we provide a lot of security metadata to make sure that everybody knows that there is a issue in the software. The same can't necessarily be said about proprietary software. You don't have access to the source code. You can't look at it. You don't know, right? You're trusting the vendor to tell you all of the information uh, and you have no way to verify it, right? Um, so those potential risks are there both with proprietary and open source. We just believe that with open source, you, there's a lot more transparency so that you understand what it is that you, you know, if the vendor's not going to fix it, then you can mitigate it uh, because you have all of that information. Uh, and that's actually why Red Hat provides so much metadata around that because we want all of our customers and ultimately because that information is in itself open to anybody, uh, we want everyone to have full access to that information so they can draw their own risk-based conclusions based on the facts of, uh, of the software. Fair enough. And so when when you talk to enterprises, what do you talk to them about sort of as the appropriate role for a vendor, right, in this process, right? You know, so in other words, obviously in the proprietary world, you know, vendor is you know, theoretically responsible for support and service um, and obviously securing the proprietary asset as well. Um, and, you know, Red Hat obviously has long had a sort of name for providing that support and service you know, for the open source software it ships. The security is obviously a little more complicated on the open source side because, you know, it can come from a variety of different places and a variety of different contributors. So, you know, when you talk to customers then, so how do they view the role of, 
um, you know, a supplier such as Red Hat in terms of, you know, helping really to secure whatever the project is we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, they, our customers look at us as a trusted supplier, that trusted vendor. Uh, we actually offload a lot of the work that you would have to do for somebody you know, if they're interested in open source software, which I think everybody is nowadays, yeah. um, and trying to self-serve in that way, we do a lot of that work that they would have to do on their own, uh, such as finding out about vulnerabilities, uh, figuring out where to get updates from, what those updates might be, applying those updates in the first place. Uh, and that's actually one of the things that is most appealing about an enterprise open source vendor, uh, particularly one like Red Hat, where we do a lot of what we call backporting. Um, and that's where we take an upstream security fix isolate it, bring it back to the software that we've provided uh, so that the customer gets the security fix, but they don't necessarily get all of the additional features and other things that you would get from a new version upstream. Um, it's one of the fundamental benefits of open source is that speed of innovation, that, that rapid uh, ability to add new features and new functionality to the software. But when you're an enterprise looking to sit on something and just you want to run your e-commerce platform or whatever it might be, whatever application you're running on that, uh, you don't necessarily want to continue changing all of what your, your application is based on the software that you're using. Uh, so when we backport those things, we ensure that the ability to use your continued software doesn't change, meaning because we're not introducing new features or new functionality or changing the way that the software operates, you don't have to adapt your own applications based on what might be a new incompatible feature that comes in upstream. So that's one of those, so that's one of those benefits that we have. Um, and because we know that human beings writing code as they do, uh, always introducing new vulnerabilities. I mean, if we, there's a certain point in time where we said all vulnerabilities are fixed and there's nothing to be fixed further on. Uh, sure, we could great, you know, update to right. the latest version all the time. Um, that's simply never going to happen. Um, right. So when we're looking at backporting, we're also ensuring that some of those, that potential risk of newly introduced features that may introduce new vulnerabilities aren't coming back to the software that we're providing, which means that the further along you go, actually, the more secure the software is uh, that we've parked on because we've isolated those fixes. We're bringing them back. We're not introducing any new features or functionality which may introduce risk uh, or new vulnerabilities, as it were. And uh, we, think, we think that that's the best way to provide that stability, but also to provide that additional security uh, for our customers. So then, you know, you've touched on this a little bit, but I think it's worth, you know, sort of talking about a little more explicitly. So what's the alternative here, right? So in other words, you know, with open source software, obviously I can, you know, go and download the asset myself. I can run it, um, you know, I can, you know, potentially even even update it, you know, or make changes, right? That's part of the promise of, of having the source code available. Um, but obviously sort of at scale, <laughs> you know, it becomes more challenging and to your point, um, you know, are the, are the, you know, is, is it possible sort of as a, I don't know, uh, as an individual end user or consumer, you know, possible to sort of secure these. So, you know, from your perspective, you know, Red Hat is doing all the things that you've talked about. What does the alternative look like, right? In other words, if, if I wanted to do it, like how much work is that, you know, sort of if I, for some reason, if I'm just totally averse to having a vendor, you know, because it seems like there's a lot of moving pieces. Oh, there's, there's a ton of moving pieces and it's, it's actually a lot of work. Um, I'll start with what you had kind of mentioned earlier about support, right? Uh, when you have a vendor, you can go to that vendor for support. You open up a ticket, there's a support team that answers your questions. Uh, when it comes to using the uh, upstream open source communities, I mean, are you going to a mailing list? Are you going to a website forum? Uh, are you going to get a response in a timely fashion? I mean, somebody may respond in a day. It might be a week. It might be a month. I mean, you don't, you don't know. It depends on how robust the community is. Uh, right. Speaking of which, you know, the community is really a deciding factor as well, right? How healthy is the community of that software that you've chosen to use? Uh, if there haven't been any updates or any activity in a long time, is anyone actually even paying attention to it? Um, and those are some of the considerations that Red Hat takes when we're curating the open source that we pull in that we then offer to our customers. Um, and in some cases, even where an upstream community has gone dark, so to speak. Um, and there are security fixes and they're not around to provide those fixes. Red Hat actually does that. So if you were grabbing from that community itself, it went dark. There's a security issue that's gone public and you're like, there is no fix coming from upstream. What do I do? You either have to figure out how do you, I mean, how do I patch this myself? It's 
not usually a trivial thing to figure out. And then the other part is, you know, what do you do with that? Right. You have to fix it yourself or you have to find an alternative, uh, an alternative. And then does that imply you're changing the application that you based uh, on top of that open source that you chose? Right. So there's a lot of self-serve. You have to, you know, be aware of, you know, all of the different open source components that you have. There's some great tools to do inventory, uh, but you still have to figure out, you know, where did it come from? Am I paying attention to it for any new security advisories? Uh, do I know that I need to update something because I'm paying attention to a, a bunch of mailing lists or uh, have a particular feed? Uh, so there's a lot of different sources of information that you got to stay on top of. There's a lot of different uh, warehouses or communities that you have to be aware of. When it comes to, you know, somebody like Red Hat, you only have to pay attention to us because we're doing all of that effort and all that work for all of the open source that we curate uh, on your behalf, right? So we're aware of the security fixes. Uh, that's, I mean, that's what my team does. We pay attention to what's being fixed. We work with engineering to make sure those fixes get out, again, backported and isolated. Uh, we do provide all the security metadata around that so that you can be aware of your usage of it and maybe what the risk to your enterprise might be. Uh, all of those things you would have to do on your own and while we recognize that you're not going to get all of your open source from somebody like Red Hat. I mean, we just, there's so much open source out there, we can't ship all of it. Uh, but you could probably use a significant amount of it. And then what little effort you have to spend tracking, you know, that small handful of, of open source that you're getting elsewhere. That's actually where you can spend your valuable time, energy, and resources to pay attention to those things and just kind of trust your vendor to provide for the rest that you have. Uh, and the more that you self-serve versus using an enterprise vendor, the more costly it's going to be because you're spending that time to track, pay attention, deal with, you know, audits and all of that stuff uh, on that little bit. Yeah. And, and I think sort of implicit in that, I think it'd be, it's worth just dragging it out sort of more explicitly is the the notion of supply chains, right? You know, because in the wake of solar winds in particular, you know, that's a subject you know, on everybody's mind, right? Um, so what is what is Red Hat sort of doing, not just to secure the projects that it itself, you know, sort of ships, but the supply chains themselves, you know, what what are you doing? What can you do, you know, to, to better protect those? Yeah, I mean, we, we're doing a lot to protect our part in the supply chain. Right. So when we look at it, you know, we're, we're a supplier to, you know, the end user. Right. And then we have our suppliers and our suppliers are you know, literally thousands of open source communities. So you can choose to have, you know, one vendor that you then put your trust into and they kind of deal with the rest of the suppliers or you're sending trust to all of those suppliers on your own. When it comes to all of those suppliers on their own, like Red Hat's not just focused on what we do. So we're not only concerned about the open source that we consume. We're actually very passionate about open source in general. Right. The entire open source ecosystem and community. So we're not focused just on our part of the supply chain or our part uh, of, of what's being used, but the whole open source ecosystem. And so we're, we're developing a lot of different kind of technologies and tools, working with different uh, foundations to try to address the whole open source ecosystem, uh, both from you know, the upstream communities, but to the end users who are pulling that open source in. So we have a lot of tools that we're investing in, uh, things like uh, SigStore, uh, there's Tekton CD chains, rootless builds, you know, uh, in OpenShift, we have security profile operators. Uh, there's a bunch of little projects that we're involved in. Um, and that's stuff that's not just, you know, pertinent or useful for Red Hat customers. These are things that affect the entire open source ecosystem. Everybody gets the advantage of it. Uh, we're also involved in some foundations and communities like the Linux Foundation uh, and the Open Source Security Foundation. And those also have the aim to make, you know, open source broadly more secure, more trustworthy, more resilient, uh, more available and ready for people to use. And so we're really happy to be able to be involved in some of those to try to affect change across the entire open source ecosystem. Fair enough. Uh, and with that, I think I mean, we could talk security forever. <laughs> as I think everybody does. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're ready to go here. So Vincent, I really appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Easy. Thank you so much.